We're asked to draw the graph of a function that satisfies these properties. <clears throat> let's see. There's an infinite amount of functions that could satisfy these properties. So let's see what they're looking for here. By click, click here to begin. Oh, it always does this. <laughs> it's the worst. Uh, first survey the given restrictions. Okay, let's cut to the chase here. Since the two one side limits are so there's a one side limit here as x approaches negative one coming from the right and as x approaches negative one coming from the left there are two different y values so it means on our graph there should be a discontinuity here um, a jump discontinuity so since it, those two one side limits are unequal right this is a one side limit because it says approach from the right this says approach from the left they're unequal any function satisfying these requirements will have a gap It'll make that jump discontinuity to jump from 4 on the y-axis down to 2 on the y-axis, rated right negative 1. <clears throat> Since the two-sided limit and function value at negative 6. Okay, so this is x approaches negative 6, and it doesn't specify from the left or from the right. So that's the two-sided limit, and it says the y value is 2. But if you plug in exactly negative 6, you get out 1. So the two-side limit and the value at x equals negative 6 are unequal. Any function satisfying the requirements, uh, it will have a hole in this graph. So the graph at negative 6, x equals negative 6, they're saying that the limit exists. As you approach from the left and from the right, you're getting the same y value. I forgot what it was, actually. What was the y value? It's saying you're approaching 2 as you approach it from the left and from the right. So the limit exists. But since the exact value is something different than the limit, the exact value at negative 6 is 1. There's a dot down here, so we call that a removable discontinuity. Open circle right there. Okay, so it will have a hole in the graph right there at negative 6 on the x-axis. <clears throat> Addition the following points to be on the graph. So if you plug in negative 6, we get out 1 for y, right? So that's the y coordinate there. And if you plug in exactly negative 1, it says it right here. If you plug in negative 1 in for x, you get out 3 for y. All right, let's go on to the next part. Um, since the limit as x approaches negative 6 of fx equals 2, and that equals the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left of fx, um, I've got to go back and review that. So as x approaches negative 6, so as we get closer and closer to negative 6, we get uh, closer and closer to y equals 2. Okay. And then we, as x approaches negative 1 from the left, so here's as x approaches negative 1 from the left, that's also 2. They're saying the constant function f of x equals... Says with all the function requirements for x is less than negative 1, except that x is... I'm actually not sure what they're saying here. So, for x, okay. So the function requirements are the biggest one you want to be looking for is that um, there's only one y value for each x value. So uh, if you have a horizontal line, that's not going to satisfy that. I don't know what that statement's saying because here. If you have f of x, if it's a constant function, then you have f of x equals 2. It's constant because there's no variable. And if you have f of x equals 2, that's a constant function going across, and that does violate the, um, the rules of a function. So, uh, Because you'd have two different y values right here and right here, two different y values for one x input. I'm not sure what they're saying because x, x is less than negative 1. I don't know. That's the only thing I can think of. Look, those two things equal each other, so they must be saying that y equals 2, but I don't understand what they're trying to say for satisfies all the function requirements. It doesn't. But let's see if it's right. Maybe I'm missing something. At x equals negative 1, the function has a gap in its graph. Um, did we draw that one? No, we drew negative 6. So here at negative 1, let's draw the statements they gave us about x is negative 1. As you approach... Oh, yeah, that we've already talked about the gap. As, that, as you approach negative 1 from the right... 
you get out y equals 4. And as you approach negative 1 from the left, you get out 2. So we have 4 and we have 2. The function is two different things as you approach x is negative 1. We don't know what it's going to do over here. But there's that gap that we were talking about at the beginning. Because the limit as x approaches negative 1, coming from the right side, the y value gets infinitely close to 4. As you approach negative 1 from the left, the y value gets infinitely close to 2, it says. Okay, so yeah, it does have a gap function. The constant function satisfies all the function requirements for x is greater than negative 1. Again, this is a horizontal line. Ah, I must be missing something, so let me, let me pause the video. Because limit approaches 4. No, that's what they wanted. Okay, that doesn't... I mean, I must be missing something because web assignment is wrong here. The constant function satisfies all the function requirements. Y equals 4 is a horizontal line, and that does not satisfy the function requirements, I guess, unless the function is only defined at these places. It's just, I don't know how this is helping students at all. But for these ones, the two limits equal 2, so that you want to plug in 2 here. For this one, the limit is x, you want to plug in the top limit. As x approaches negative 1 from the right, you want to plug in 4. It's silly to me. I've never seen a question like that before, and I don't get what they're trying to say, and it doesn't make any sense with function requirements, because it doesn't, unless you're assuming that the function is some crazy piecewise function. Okay. <clears throat> Use the information of the previous steps. Oh, okay, so here they're saying it's a piecewise function, but no, it's continuous on that place, so what I was saying is still true. Okay, so we're just supposed to fill these in. X, X is less than negative 6. Um, so we have x approaches negative 6 is 2. Uh, so I think that's the only thing we can say. We don't know anything about what's happening with the function. Oh, I see. at exactly negative 6, it's 1. So if we say x is less than 6, uh, less than negative 6, the y value is going to be 2. But if you get to exactly negative 6, like it says right here, if you plug in negative 6 in for x, you should get out 1. And then between negative 6 and negative 1, they said the limit as x approaches negative 6 needs to be 2. And the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left needs to be 2. So this should be 2 here. And I'll draw that graph. So we're thinking about the x values between negative 6 and negative 1. So we have these two statements that talk about negative 6 and negative 1 on, that, on this interval. Right? They said as x approaches negative 6, the y value should be 2. And then as x approaches negative 1 from the left, here's negative 1, the y value should also be 2. So we don't know what's happening in between with this function. Um, it sounds like they want it to just be a constant. But we know both those limits have to equal 2 on the y-axis. So as you approach negative 1 from the left, the y values are 2. As you approach negative 6 from the right, the y values are 2. So that's got to be 2 here. And then for x equals negative 1, they said if you plug in exactly negative 1, you need to get out a 3 for a y value. And if x is greater than negative 1, so as we approach negative 1 from the right, that's this limit right here, the y values need to be 4 to satisfy those conditions. Sounds like there's one last step. Oh, and then they just want you to choose the graph. So y equals 2 when x is less than negative 6. So this one works. That satisfies that condition. Uh, when x equals negative 6, right here, the y value should be 1. So this graph is still working. The y value is 1 here. Let's check the third row. Um, between negative 6 and negative 1, the y, y value should be 2. That's correct here. When x equals exactly negative 1, the y value should be 3, according to this statement here. When you plug in negative 1, though, the y value is 4, so this graph is eliminated. Okay. This graph isn't going to be correct either because we said at exactly negative 6, when you plug in negative 6 in for x, you should get out a y value of 1. So on negative 6, the y value is still 2, so that graph's eliminated. This graph is eliminated for the same reason, so this is our only option left, and it does check out with that last condition, last two conditions we haven't checked. 
x equals negative 1, we got y equals 3. And x is greater than negative 1, we got y is 4. OK, so um, it's tough because WebAssign is saying, hey, there's this function that's got all these properties, but they didn't give us any, they didn't tell us that it's a function, uh, that it's a constant function at any point, I don't think. Yeah, in the instructions, they should have said, there's a constant piecewise function that, that satisfies these conditions. Because otherwise, you're thinking about an infinite amount of different possible functions. That's why I was drawing those curves. But over time, I realized that's what they intended without explicitly saying that in the beginning. So definitely a tough problem, but it's really just WebAssign tough.